Tom, creating a heritage experience seems to be a popular phrase in the museum and heritage business. Um, how does it relate to your plans here? So um, at the Assembly Rooms, we really want to bring to life the amazing stories that are associated with this building, um, one of the most significant buildings of the late 18th century. Uh, and uh, we absolutely want to create an experience that's immersive, that transports you back to that story uh, and that time, bringing to life not just the Assembly Rooms, but I guess the social life of the city as a whole. Um, but we want to do that alongside thinking about how the building can be used as well in the 21st century. Well, isn't the building itself, it's Grade 1 listed, uh, designed by John Wood Jr., isn't it an experience enough in its own right? It is, but um, you know, we're, we're really aware that a number of our members who might visit, you know, they, they do want to come and they want to explore and enjoy the, um, the fantastic architecture of the building. But it can be a very quick visit and you can go into the ballroom if it's empty uh, and not full of life uh, and, and be in and out you know, in, in a couple of minutes. And so we want to find ways to, to kind of bring the context to life so that before you get to the, to the main rooms, you're actually, if you've never been to Bath before, you have an opportunity to um, find out why people came to Bath and how that culminated in the visit to the ball as part of the highlight of your social experience, but also work with um, other partner organisations in the city, other museums and heritage organisations to tell parts of the story of Bath, the sort of social story of Bath, so that when you actually arrive in the ball, you've got all that context and you can then just feel the excitement and then look at how we can bring to life that space when, it, when there aren't events happening. So how do we actually get the sense of the excitement and the colour and the glamour of the 18th century for visitors to the spaces um, and then they can enjoy it for themselves? You're not actually suggesting people being able to go to the ball? Um, well, no, we, we, we will certainly be looking at what kind of programming we have, and that may well include balls through the year, you know, don't know yet. This is all things for us to work through, working with other partners in the city, so whether we're partnering uh, with things for the festivals that might happen here, we, we don't know yet exactly how it's going to work because we want to make sure that we create the experience, but then we look at how we can enable other things to happen there so that people will still be able to go to the ball and enjoy the rooms for the purpose for which they were created, but also throughout the year at other times come and get a sense of, of, of all the amazing history that happened in this space. This is a point, isn't it? The building is a place of assembly and it has to be said, the National Trust needs to make money and the fact that conferences and concerts and weddings are held here uh, helps bring in money. Is that still going to happen? I think we're looking closely at what the balance is between creating an experience for visitors to enjoy and then enabling the rooms to be used um, for events, for, for things outside of normal opening hours. And I think we don't know yet what exactly that balance will be, but it's, you know, we're not saying that it won't be available for private hire. We're going to see how that's all going to work together along with, with the experience we want to create in the rooms. And you're right to say, you know, we, we, we do need to generate income from this building to help look after it for the future, but also to help us look after the countryside that we um, own and manage around, around the, the city, uh, 500 acres of countryside that's free to access for everyone which um, doesn't have a source of income directly that looks after it. Well, it has some income, but not enough to, to, to maintain it. So helping to generate some income is really important, but it's about the experiences we want to create here. Wouldn't um, maybe buying the fashion museum from Baines and keeping it in the basement help to generate income? Well, I think um, the council obviously have their own plans for the Fashion Museum and looking at where it can go in the future. I mean, one of the things that we're, we, you know, I've worked with um, co colleagues at Heritage Services for a number of years and talked with them about our plans to take back the building. And we want to work with them to help a smooth transition for that. Um, but the Fashion Museum is an extraordinary collection of 100,000 objects, as I'm sure you, you know. And, and I think, you know, uh, I've, I know Heritage Services and councillors I've talked to have said actually it's a huge opportunity to look for a new location for the Fashion Museum where you can see those uh, collections 
um, much more um, in, it presented in a sort of 21st century museum quality, if you like, rather than trying to make them fit within a basement of a, a very important uh, grade one listed building. Uh, and so I'm sure they've got really exciting plans for doing that. And we think there's, you know, it's a huge opportunity for the city to look at another space where it could be located. Uh, I, I don't know whether you've had a chance of going into the Frankenstein experience, a couple of doors up from the Jane Austen Centre. I mean, they have been able to fill every room with something different, but it's a much smaller building. Mm than the one you're going to have to fill. Are, are you really confident you can put something into every space? Absolutely. I mean, I think there's one of the things about the assembly rooms that people may not know is actually there are lots of other spaces associated with the building from its original design that you can't currently access. So, for example, there was a cold bath in the basement of the assembly rooms that were designed for the use of the subscribers. And uh, bits of it still remain. It's being used for other purposes behind the scenes at the moment. It'd be lovely to bring that back and tell that story. There was a subscriber's parlor in the assembly rooms. There was a billiard room. And in fact, uh, a coffee house associated with the assembly room. So there's lots of different stories to do with the building beyond the big rooms that you see today that we'd love to bring to life. I'm sure you've been talking to Bath Preservation Trust and no doubt you've been into number one. Uh, since they've installed the experience there. Something similar for the assembly rooms? Um, absolutely, I've, I've been to number one. I think what they've done there is, is brilliant, actually. I love the way they've woven the story through, through the experience in the historic rooms. And we definitely want to be talking with the Preservation Trust and all the other organisations to think about how what we create here complements what they do there. And actually, you can see as a visitor kind of coming to make sense of Georgian Bath, Going to see the domestic experience at number one, understanding how people lived when they stayed in the, in the city, but then coming to see the social experience at, at the assembly rooms would just be a brilliant um, combination, I think. So definitely want to look at um, how we you know, work with them, how we, um, we may you know, think about similar ideas around the use of projections and the use of, certainly use of storytelling and, and people stories to bring to life the history is definitely what we're, we're thinking about. And it's good to hear that uh, the National Trust maybe wants a, a closer cooperation with other heritage attractions. Absolutely. I mean, one of the wonderful things about Bath is that the number of different museums there are and, and each of them telling key parts of the story. And so what we want to do, if, we, if we're telling a bit more of the context of the social life of George and Bath, if you like, um, you know, it'd be brilliant to work with the Herschel Museum, for example. William Herschel um, performed at the assembly rooms, but obviously, you know, made extraordinary discoveries, built his own telescope in, in 19 New King Street. And we'd like to reference that story and hopefully encourage visitors to the assembly rooms to, to go back to you know, go to, to the Herschel Museum and discover more. So we see it as an opportunity to kind of work with, with all the different um, heritage institutions, bring together some of that story here, but then try and signpost people out to explore more in the city. The National Trust, like other heritage services, has been badly hit by COVID, by the pandemic, by lockdown. Um, people are no doubt listening to this and the question the first question in, in their mind is when is all this going to happen and do you have to bear in mind how much it's going to cost uh, in deciding when you're going to do this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the National Trust has been hit hard, as, as have so many organisations through the last 18 months. Um, I mean, in terms of the timescales, the, the lease, um, the break in the lease is in March 2023. So we're looking towards that and working very closely with the council on that transition plan, if you like. Uh, and then we'll be looking at how long you know, it might take for us to develop the experience that we want to do. And we're looking at all the different funding um, op options, opportunities, if you like, to secure that. Um, but, but we do, this is a priority for the trust. This, you know, we don't have many buildings in urban centres, certainly not of this scale across the whole of the country. And it's a real opportunity because of the significance of the building, the stories that we can tell, the ability to reach different audiences is recognised as not just a sort of regional priority, but also a national one as well. That's good to hear. Am I right in thinking, because so many people tell me this, that um, Bath has more members of the National Trust than any other town or city in this country? Well, certainly as a percentage of the population, it's the biggest you know, percentage of, of, of members uh, in, 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 the, uh, in this city. I think uh, the last time I, I checked, I think we we're on around 17,000 members wow. uh, in Bath. So it is a huge, a huge percentage of the population. And 
you know, there's wonderful things for people to see in terms of the nearby properties to Bath. But, you know, I think there's much more that we could do with the city um, um, through the assembly rooms, through the work we're doing in the countryside um, to really, you know, to benefit our members, but to benefit the city as a whole. Tom, you mentioned Bath Hampton Meadows. I, I know it's a recent acquisition. Um, there's not much you can tell us about your plans, but can I just confirm one thing, that there is a public right of way over it at the moment. Mm -hmm. Will the National Trust uh, retain and maintain that? Absolutely, yeah. No, we're not, we're not looking at tr trying to remove access. I mean, it, we, we want to talk, and it's great to talk to you again uh, in, in a few weeks' time when we can share more, but we certainly want to look at how we um, with, with the meadows, how we can manage it better for nature in the future, but also for, for public access as well. So there's no question of removing uh, that right of access through there. That's good to hear. And bearing in mind your time scale for the assembly rooms, can you also reassure the public that there won't be a period when the building pretty well remains derelict? Absolutely. I mean, you know, as we develop our plans for what we want to do in the building, um, it may be some time before we can open up the new experience perhaps in, in the basement but um, we're really keen to look at how during that period the building can remain part of city life animated there may be different things that we could do with different partners over that period uh, and so one of the things that we are um, soon going to be doing is, is wanting to be sharing more about our ideas and working with the community around our future plans here and so there's an opportunity I, I'm sure for people to get involved soon.